It's really, really unraveling at the moment. Everything's going crazy. Um, but this one I thought was interesting because it, it didn't come from Endymion. Everything else did. And um, we'll get to that. <clears throat> but um, apparently Star Wars Outlaws is such a, to a total flop um, for Ubisoft that they've only managed to sell a million copies mm. to date, which is three months or something like that, that that game's been out now. And it is, it's embarrassing. I know yes. it sounds at first like a big number, but it's mm. not. Go on, Ryan. Uh, it, it's a complete disaster, folks. To give you uh, some context, I know it was 10 years ago, and we will be bringing up Dragon Age later on in the show. But when Dragon mm. Age Inquisition was released, within the span of a few months, it sold many millions of copies, and it ended up selling 12 million copies within its first year of release and it was to this day bioware's most financially successful game and it was like one of their main games after uh, the triumph despite the bad story of uh, mass effect 3 star wars outlaws was supposed to be that triumphant entry for ubisoft within the star wars franchise it should have bare minimum got 12 million copies sold in the space of of a year i mean knowing the power of the former power of star wars as a franchise and the former power of ubisoft i think it could have easily sold 12 million copies for it to only sell a million in three months let's let's say that correlates to four million in a year which will not happen but that's best case scenario that would still constitute a massive failure for both the star wars franchise and for ubisoft Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's a disaster. There's no way around it. Mm. I mean, actually, Black Myth Wukong, which has been out for what a month, about that, mm -hmm. has had 20 million. Wow. <laughs> Holy moly. That's insane. Well, that's China, of course. A lot oh. of that is China. But um, I don't know. Let's pick a random Assassin's Creed game. Let's pick one that wasn't so big. Something How about Mirage. Like yeah, okay, Mirage, but although Mirage is famous for doing really, really badly, but I still think it managed oh. to squeak out something. I think it was 5 million? Uh, let me have a look. Let me see. Um, yeah, 5 million players. Okay, so I don't know if that means copies sold. Uh, let's do one that was like a non-event, but but was still good, like Syndicate. Um, let's see how much that sold. Sales numbers. 5.5 .5 million. Yeah, okay, so there you go. So that, I guess, would be fairly average for them then. I guess they're just disappointed now. No, actually saying that. Unity sold 10 million. And Black Flag even more than that. Mm. So, yeah, this is, you know, what Ubisoft expects. Mm. But uh, Star Wars Outlaws, which, let's not forget, had one of the biggest budgets that they've ever had for a game. A lot of this came out in the Endymion video that we'll be commenting on as well. Mm -hmm. um, they spent hundreds of millions on this, more than 400 easily on Good this game. God. Looks like they might have gone as high as 600. <clears throat> I don't know. But if they did, where the hell did that money go? Because the game looks like shit, plays like shit. And well, all of this will be explained later, of course. But um, but one million copies to date. That's that's what, like that's what sixty or seventy dollars per copy. That's sixty to seventy somewhere, million dollars. Somewhere between seventy and one hundred and fifty, depending on which version people bought. Okay, well, it just goes to show, and not all of that goes directly to Ubisoft. There are you know different arrangements with different companies, platformers. Yeah. Of course, the Star Wars franchise itself with, with Disney. So this is a complete financial disaster. It might even be a bigger financial disaster than the Skull and Bones project. But uh, that, that's like comparing the Everest with, with K2 in terms of mountains. They're both pretty big, just like these project losses are pretty big as well.
Yeah, it's pretty appalling. Um, they spent an enormous amount of money on Star Wars Outlaws, and of course, they spent easily four hundred to six hundred million on them um, on Skull and Bones. So <clears throat> that just seems to be what they spend now. Um, whereas what you're getting back appears to be less than a quarter of that. Mm. Even if the budget is two hundred million mm. or two hundred fifty million, they still would be losing a hundred million dollars. I, I think it's uh, just 200, because, sorry, no, 199 well, million. Well, I, I personally Christ. think after finding out Ubisoft had, hopefully they're bleeding out now, but had nearly 20,000 workers, I think a lot of the, the money that went into this project, that went into Skull and Bones, went into the administrative as uh, aspects of it, the human resources aspects of the, the company and the projects, uh, both of which are infested with the kind of political correctness, the kind of social justice and identity politics, which form the backbones of the woke ideology that is destroying franchise after franchise. And this is just the latest example for Ubisoft, which has gone from, from everywhere to nowhere in the span of, of four years, from a peak share price in, in the start of 2020 to, to being pennies on the dollar practically in 2024, where they're going to go from being a, a public traded company to a private company just yeah. to survive. Well, they need to do that now, really. Mm. I don't see how they can survive much longer if they don't do that. They're pretty screwed. They mm. really are in bigger trouble than we've been. Mm. Even we have had like two funerals for them and like they they're worse than we think it's really quite astonishing um so that's just one of the interesting things that's going on with ubisoft at the moment but to have bled out that much and then make back so little <clears throat> it's astonishing someone tried to say uh, according to the uk sales chart star wars outlaws have done about half of assassin's creed mirage that's so the, the millions Exactly. It's a disaster. Oh, my goodness. That's right. That's absolutely right. And, I mean, we found out a lot more about Star Wars Outlaws in the Endymion video that he did and, and the reports about that as well. Um, one of the things that we found out that's not strictly about Assassin's Creed was uh, about the fact that when it came to the character of K. Vest that everyone was obviously roasting and laughing at for months uh, before the game came out, it turned out that the reason that they that she looks so freaking weird is because they had decided to try and go what they called omni ethnic with what? her. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I have a quote from from the document I put together. Um, just give me a second sure, here. Sure. Omni ethnic. Um, the protagonist KVS underwent significant changes. Ubisoft initially planned for her to be an Indian woman. According to my uh, play summary, us Cam of... play us Kamala Harris in Star Wars Outlaws, ladies and gentlemen. One minute she's Indian, the next minute she's black. This is it, right? And um, so the word they used actually was omniracial, but I think I like omni ethnic better. But um, yeah, so the plan was originally for her to be an Indian woman, but then they freaked out, they completely panicked, and decided that they should. Uh, redesign the character to look a little bit like every possible ethnicity all at once. Like a living globalist or something. Ryan with his arm, the with this flare. Reality based so sharp, all of you was here.